Hello everyone, I'm Ron Berger and this is the Astrology News Report. Today is February 18th, 2024. This is the Applied Astrology segment, where I take a topic or person or situation that is pertinent to current events and analyze the corresponding astrological energy combination. In this report, we'll take a look at Joe Biden's natal chart, what his karmic timeline and current transits tell us about what's been going on at this point in this rather consequential year for the President of the United States. It's been a while since I did an update on Joe Biden's chart, so here we go. In September 2022, before the last midterms, President Biden entered a new chapter in his life, his Saturn Major Period. Saturn represents serious stuff, responsibility, restriction, hard karma, delay, obstruction, suffering. I call Saturn the reality check planet. But Saturn also signifies some very necessary stuff that keeps our lives running. It's the planet of structure, stability, security, work, rules, duty, and established order. Without Saturn, there is no order, and things descend into chaos. For a Scorpio rising chart such as Joe Biden's, Saturn becomes the ruler of his third house and fourth house. Thus, Saturn represents his third house karma for making efforts, use of skills and talents, his courage and initiative, and survival. Simultaneously, Saturn activates his fourth house of heart and soul, home life, stability, and security. Saturn's third and fourth house karma manifests from a prominent place in Biden's chart, the seventh house. This is the house of one-to-one -one relationships. It's the house of partnership. Famously, the seventh is the house of marriage. But it also represents other types of partnership, such as a business partner or a client, and, especially pertinent to this discussion, the direct opponent. Having the ruler of the third house in the seventh house gives skills in partnership. And remember, this is a Scorpio rising chart. Scorpio is the sign of alliances. But this also gets interpreted as the planet representing skills in the seventh house of the direct opponent. And this is Saturn. Saturn is persistent. So, Biden is persistent when it comes to dealing with his direct opponent. Ruler of the fourth house, heart and soul, in the seventh house of partnership, shows that Biden really puts his heart into relationships. This karma is now activated during this time of his life. The ruler of the seventh house is the dispositor for his natal Saturn. For Scorpio rising, Taurus is the seventh house. Its ruler is Venus. Note that Venus resides in Biden's first house of self. In other words, Biden's karma, as shown by the ruler of the seventh and the first, is that he readily forms partnerships and that his partner has influence over him. Now, see that Venus forms an opposition aspect with Saturn. In other words, the two planets are mutually aspecting and influencing each other. So, a powerful relationship between Saturn, his current major and sub-period ruler, and Venus, representing 7th house karma, in his first house, that is, his self-identity. Now, here's another sub-meaning of the seventh house. The public sees you from this house in the chart. Thus, the interpretation is that the public's vision in Biden's chart is represented by Venus, ruler of the seventh house sign, which resides in his first house. 
Venus, by the way, is the planet of appearance. In other words, Biden's chart shows partnership with the public, and his natal Saturn, representing his third house of skills and fourth house of heart, resides in the house of public vision. Remember that Saturn is the planet of control. In other words, he cares a lot about how the public sees him and makes a conscious effort to control how he appears to the public. But what about the signification of the seventh house also being the direct opponent? And here we see a potential problem. Saturn is the planet of longevity. Saturn has staying power. And here it is in the house signifying direct opponent. Additionally, Saturn is retrograde, which gives it extra endurance, both to Biden's third house of making efforts, but also to the seventh house person, in other words, his direct opponent. See, too, that Uranus, the planet of the unexpected, also occupies Biden's seventh house, making his opponent not only intractable, but also unpredictable. Okay, now we'll take a look at current and future transits affecting Biden's chart. Right now, in early 2024, Saturn is transiting in Aquarius, Biden's fourth house. Jupiter and Uranus are transiting in Aries, Biden's sixth house. Rahu is in Pisces, Ketu is in Virgo, his fifth and eleventh houses, respectively. Those are the slow-moving planets. Saturn transiting in his fourth house during his Saturn period puts a lot of focus on stability and security, and in this election cycle, that will be his main thrust. In contrast to Trump and his supporters, who want to burn it all down. Saturn, planet of obligation, now transiting in his fourth house of heart and soul, is what motivates him to pursue his conviction that he's the only one to oppose Trump. Jupiter and Uranus, currently transiting in Biden's sixth house, puts the planet of increase and the planet of the unexpected in his sixth house of enemies and problems. An unwelcome combination for Biden, but thankfully only lasts until May, when Jupiter, followed by Uranus, moved to Taurus, his seventh house. More on that in a future report. Rahu, now transiting in Biden's fifth house, puts the signifier of obsession in his fifth house of child, which manifests currently as the ongoing mess with Hunter Biden. Ketu, signifier of change, now transiting in his eleventh house of goals and friends, is an ominous warning that some of his friends are going to desert him. Mars is the planet of action and aggression. Its transit position shows where the energy is. Mars is currently in Capricorn, Biden's third house, the house of making efforts. This is considered to be a favorable transit. It gives Biden the energy to push forward on his desires and to make use of his skills and talents. But this only lasts until mid-March. Mars will move to Aquarius, his fourth house, on March 15th. The planet of aggression in the fourth house of heart and soul gives him the juice to go forth and wage war on his enemies. Mars will be there together with Saturn, a combination that provides a lot of concentrated focus. But, since this is a double malefic transit, it can manifest as an intense unease in the fourth house of happiness. A big topic in the media lately has been Biden's age and accusations of mental decline. Of course, this is partly a creation of the media wanting to somehow attack him without saying they prefer Trump, who is much more obviously in a state of mental decline. 
This year, Neptune is transiting in the early degrees of Pisces, Biden's fifth house. Amongst its many meanings, the fifth is the house of intelligence. Neptune is the planet of dreams, confusion, and delusion. Neptune is approaching opposition to Biden's natal Neptune. The combination of transiting Neptune and natal Neptune can only happen once in a person's life. Natal Neptune has an idealistic quality. Its natal placement in Biden's 11th house is what gives him his idealistic goals. The opposition from transiting Neptune creates confusion and a lack of understanding from others regarding Biden's idealism and makes the public distrust him. Ketu's simultaneous transit in his 11th house adds more doubt because K2 is an eclipse point, obscures things. Biden doesn't seem to be getting credit for his accomplishments. That's K2 transiting in his 11th house. The 11th house is accomplishments. K2 is subtractive. The confusion and forgetfulness pointedly described in the recently published report by special counsel Robert Herr is a good example of this. On top of the age issue, Biden has a lot of circumstantial karma to deal with. There are two wars going. Inflation is still increasing, albeit at a slower rate. The border problem remains unsolved. And cultural issues continually rear their ugly heads. There are a lot of planetary changes between now and November. Too much to include in this report. But we know, as time marches on, more events will be happening to Donald Trump. And as he becomes more aggressive and chaotic, more voters will get turned off by him. That could determine the outcome. Essentially, opposition to Trump becomes the winning factor for November. Of course, I'll be doing more analysis of the context in future episodes. Okay, that does it for this report. Next week,